Hello and welcome to Manufacturing Day. Um, I'm glad to be here. Unfortunately, we cannot be in person, but technology lets us um, do everything that we need to do. And hopefully you'll learn a little bit of something um, from our breakout session. My name is Nadja Kohler, and I am the Business Development Manager for Education for US Robotics at a company called ABB. A um, little bit about our company. ABB is a leading global technology company. We energize the transformation of technology and industry to achieve a more productive, sustainable future by connecting software to our electrification, robotics, automation, and motion portfolio. ABB pushes the boundaries of technologies to drive performance to new levels with a history of excellence stretching back more than 130 years. ABB's success is driven by about 110,000 talented employees in over 100 countries. Um, we have quite a few robots out there. We are a global country company that's what this means so we abb spans across the globe not only in robotics but in a variety of different areas solar power electric vehicles um, motion motors robotics almost anything that you come in contact with um, any industry abb is probably a part of it somewhere in the world so without further ado, what I wanted to do for this breakout session was to introduce you to some information about ABB, but most importantly, because this is manufacturing day, I wanted to provide you the ability to learn a little bit about careers, um, maybe the career that you never even imagined. Where is your career going to lead you? So I have um, a variety of videos. Um, spanning anywhere from a robot whisperer to the food industry to entertainment to the retail industry. So come along with me on my ride and um, hopefully, like I said, you will learn a little bit of something. There are a few questions. I may ask you questions as, um, as this is going along as well. Most of these videos are YouTube videos, so you can search up ABB Robotics or ABB in general, and you can find all of these videos that I'm sharing with you on YouTube. We also have our own channel, ABB Robotics. Let's get going. This first video is um, our robot whisperer. Uh, I did want to make sure that you heard about this. It has to do with creative insights. And the, the most important piece of it is the how important it is to continue and want to have lifelong learning um, and, and how you should continue to strive towards lifelong learning. The roles and capabilities of robots are changing, and the way people interact with robots is also changing. What does this mean for our future? Our ability to connect robots and automation systems to the industrial internet to collect more information from sensors and cameras than we ever have before, and to analyze and benefit from that information has never been greater. My name is Madeline Gannon and I'm a robot whisperer. And what that means is I'm able to get robots to do things that they were never designed to do. Manus is an interactive art installation that features 10 ABB robots. Um, but instead of acting in isolation as 10 individual robots, they all share the same brain, which means that they can move as a coordinated pack. Manus is able to follow and respond to visitors' movements in a three-dimensional space and autonomously interact with people. For example, the robots can switch from moving in unison in a regularly programmed routine to responding to visitor taps on the display's plexiglass enclosure, even moving from person to person as they come and go. In the 
future, such natural interactions will make it possible for people and robots to work together in even more and exciting new ways. This joint effort we have done together with Madeline really is interesting for us and to see how the technology shift is going on in the world today. It is shifting so fast, so it is very important for companies like ABB to work with pioneers that look at how technologies can be used also for the future. Industrial robots are the foundation of our automation infrastructure, but we're starting to shift from robotic automation to robotic autonomy. And I want to know how we're going to share our world with these robots that can navigate. This adaptability is important because the shift towards mass customization of everything from cars to clothes and cell phones means that factories today have to be more flexible than ever before. Traditionally, in the past, we could actually make our education and we could somehow utilize that for the whole time of work. But today, with a very strong changing technology, there is a, a, a need for more and more changing and updating the skill set in order to be able to be successful. It is very important to see how seamless robots and uh, humans actually can work together. The way we are now making uh, the robots easier to use through new technologies, like for companies, with, uh, with governments, with academia and so forth, I think this new way of collaborating will help technology also to shape the future of workforce. With our existing technology that we have now, if we use it in a more thoughtful way, we can actually create ways of relating to this, these machines um, in more human-centered manners, so it's more inclusive of people. This is why ABB have a strategic partnership with the World Economic Forum and we are very happy then to have this discussion with Madeline and Manus in order to set this uh, important discussion. So what I have up next for you is um, a brand new development just released a couple weeks ago is our augmented reality capabilities within our Robot Studio software. Robot Studio is our top of the line programming and simulation software. It is the same software that industry uses to program their robots and monitor their robots and adjust and troubleshoot with their robots. Um, and we actually offer this free to schools as well, so you can get that experience. But we're very excited to introduce our augmented reality piece um, with a brand new app, which is free both on iOS and um, uh, Android as well, um, and it's called Robot Studio AR. Um, go ahead, download it, check out the simulations and see see what you can find out. Here's a little piece, just over a minute um, on our augmented reality piece and software. One of the questions um, that your teacher should have given you was what year was Yumi born or created? Um, 
And so this should answer it for you. Um, we're celebrating Yumi's birthday this year in 2020. So let's see all of the different things that Yumi has been involved in and Yumi has been successful in over the last five years. Yumi is five years old this year. And in the five years since ABB's collaborative robot was introduced, it certainly proved a tasty treat for the public, conducting operas, starring in music videos, and meeting a host of world leaders. But Yumi is about so much more than just eye-catching photo ops. For industry, the advent of a truly collaborative robot working alongside human staff has been little short of a revolution. Before Yumi came along, robots were typically corralled inside protective cages or behind safety barriers. Yumi's different. With an ergonomic human-centered design, padded arms and motion control software, it can be installed in workstations alongside people, working collaboratively on tasks with human colleagues. And lead-through programming means it can be programmed in minutes by someone with no specialized training. That all makes it ideal for material handling and assembly jobs, while its accuracy has meant Yumi has found a place in medical research too, increasing hygiene and efficiency. The Yumi family has continued to grow. The concept of a mobile Yumi has been tested, and there's also a single-armed model that can be mounted on tables, walls, or ceilings. Yumi led robots out from behind the barriers, and it's now looking forward to another five years of human-robot collaboration. Our next video brings you into um, the food industry. Um, so robots are used a lot in the food industry um, to, Ill and I'm gonna show you these videos sort of to illustrate a lot of the gentle and precise movements that robots can actually have. Nobody would ever think of robots as gentle, um, but they are. They can be extremely gentle, precise. Um, they can produce and package many products at, at, a, at a fast rate and at a single time. Um, and they are super efficient and they can be very sanitary. You don't have um, the germs that individuals uh, introduce into the food industry. They can be contained in a clean room um, and, and really never, never touch the outside. So very fast, very efficient, um, precise, and, and very sanitary. So here's a video about picking and packing salami sticks. Um, and then the next one is uh, on pizza making. So hopefully you enjoy. Um, hopefully these are a couple of the snacks that you enjoy on a regular basis as well.
aveva 20 anni e sono una delle responsabili di produzione. L'impianto robotizzato che vedete alle mie spalle funziona grazie ad una telecamera posta al di sopra dell'impianto che legge la dosatura del pomodoro, invia queste informazioni ai robot che calcolano le distanze e il tempo in cui far scendere l'utensile e spalmare il pomodoro senza farlo fuoriuscire e senza lasciare troppo bordo all'interno della pizza. Questo impianto noi lo stiamo utilizzando per un diametro di pizze, ma è utilizzato per svariati prodotti di svariati diametri. L'impianto ci dà la possibilità di avere costanza nella spalmatura del pomodoro, questo ci permette di avere un prodotto standardizzato che contenti il nostro cliente sempre e che quindi ci aiuta a migliorare la qualità del prodotto. So the next um, video is on palletizing cartons and what that means is taking boxes and stacking them up on pallets or on skids uh, and wrapping them up and shipping them. Um, this is something that robots are used for quite a bit and what this video really um, highlights is the use of robots to reduce injury or risk to individuals, um, those repetitive motions to um, reduce the um, occurrence of carpal tunnel in arms and wrists, back injuries, things like that. Robots can lift very heavy loads very easily without injuring themselves. Um, how these robots speed up production and the completion cycle, how they are able to handle high volumes that come in in a short amount of time or meet tight deadlines um, that are needed for businesses. So here is our palletizing cartons. George Western Foods is one of Australia and New Zealand's largest food manufacturers, employing around 8,000 employees in close to 60 sites. With a proud history of growth fueled by both acquisition and an entrepreneurial spirit, George Western Foods produced some of Australia and New Zealand's best love brands. Iconic brands such as Don Small Goods, KR Castle Main, Sunblessed, Golden, Top Taste, Bergen, and brands such as Bazaar Breads of the World are all part of the George Western Foods business. Today we take a look inside George Western Foods Castle Main operations where there are 16 ABB palletizing robots working to serve 32 packaging lines, making it Australia's largest palletizing system. So the palletizing line collects over 450 different products at a rate of up to 9,000 cartons per hour, bringing those in from four different packing areas, uh, 27 lines with over a kilometre of conveyor bringing them into the palletizing cell, which has 16 robots serving 32 pallet stations, with another robot up the front preparing the pallets, and then the two rail systems with four shuttles, taking the finished pallets down to two stretch wrappers, outputting over 100 pallets per hour and feeding them to the AGVs. So the GWF Castlemaine site produces a range of small goods um, that are supplied to consumers through the retail food service and small distributor network. The factory is separated into four key plants. We've got ham, bacon, salami and continental small goods. And each of those plants is serviced by a shared palletizer and distribution um, service. So the problems we were experiencing before the robots were the manual handling, the OHS issues, um, the downtime of, of not getting the product out fast enough, um, the loss and the labour costs. Also, we were having challenges through the retailers with making sure that the consistency and quality of our pallets was what they required for their now automated networks. Um, and like everyone else, we had increasing labour costs um, and had some concerns about our ability to meet the productivity targets that we needed to to remain competitive. There is definitely a trend in the marketplace to move to more shelf-ready, smaller pack sizes, and obviously that increases the repetitiveness of the tasks that the team here needed to do, um, therefore increasing our OH&S risk, which is probably the main risk that we have on site. 
I think the defining factor was um, knowing that we could eliminate a lot of manual handling, um, remove a fair bit of the labour cost due to the, the um, manual handling. I guess the ability to manage the speed and volume that was coming out of four facilities coming into a central distribution space was definitely a factor, but also the, the footprint that we were had available to us at the time. Our installation was largely a greenfield installation. However, um, we have seen obviously a huge improvement in the oh esque injuries associated with palletising because we've largely eliminated that task. The other things that we've had is we, the rejection levels that we would get from customers with regard to our pallets and how they were presented to them has, has obviously improved significantly. And finally, um, we've definitely managed to deal with the volume that is now being processed out of this facility as, as each of the facilities have come online. Yeah, we chose the IRB 4600 robot. Um, while we looked at the palletizers, the orientation and positioning of the cartons needed the sixth axis. So while the palletizers offered higher speed, we needed the extra dexterity of the six axis robot. Um, to be sure that we'd be able to handle all of the palletising tasks that are from the conveyors coming in. The configuration of the line was chosen based on the rates coming in to, on individual lines. So each robot's able to look after two lines and maintain the rates on those two lines. So that really dictated the configuration of the line with the 16 robots serving the 32 pallet stations. We're very happy with the way the project's worked out. It's Australia's largest robotic palletising system. It's working to specification, the customer's very happy, and um, it's a great looking facility. Being built from Greenfield allowed us to really make a world class facility up there. So we're, we're very proud and very happy of the, the installation. So the next one is is really fun and creative and something that people wouldn't ever think of. Um, this is part of the retail industry and um, this past holiday season, the 1920 holiday season, um, ABB robots were in Bloomingdale's in those famous windows at the grand opening um, and they maintained uh, in those windows and doing what they were doing and inside of Bloomingdale's as well throughout the holiday season. Um, just somebody that's creative um, you would never think you don't have to be an engineer to be in robotics um, you can be this artsy individual who's super creative and doesn't want to go to engineering school you know you can be the one that comes up with these ideas and and work with the engineers directly so here's our uh, ringing in of the holiday season at bloomingdale's um, the flagship store in new york Andy Robot is an amazing creative partner that we have. And um, here comes another video that involves Andy Robot as well. Um, you'll see him in person, um, but he is one of one of the most creative individuals. Um, this is one of the largest Royal Caribbean ships, the Quantum of the Seas, and they're our trademarked Robo screen um, presentation that's used for some of their entertainment. Um, and he'll be talking about that. Um, 
so. We're here on the Quantum of the Seas. It's Royal Caribbean's newest cruise ship. It's, uh, they're calling it a smart ship. And as part of this smart ship, we're standing underneath what I would describe as an amazing scene of robots and software and screens. And I'm standing here with Andy Robot, Andy Flessis of, of Robotic Arts based in Las Vegas. He is the genius behind this design. Andy, could you tell us a little bit about what this is? Well, we're in a room called 270. So what's neat about this room, the coolest technology in the room itself is the 270 degree view of the ocean, which you can see here. It starts over here, and it turns all the way, the way around. You can see, so it's giving guests a view of the ocean that they've never seen on a typical cruise. And then here we have um, the robo screens, which are mounted on a gantry, which has uh, 18,000 pounds of strength to lift these six robots up into the ceiling. Right now they're in their play position. So the robots come down on the gantry and this is where they perform. So if you kind of look up here, six, we have six IRB 6620 robots with custom Leone uh, cable management systems and mounted to the robots, if you come in the back here, mounted to the robots, we have Dactronics four millimeter LED screens, which are custom made. Each one of those is about $200,000. Four millimeter, it's the best LED screen available in the world today. And what we do is we're um, running these robots to create all sorts of different kinetic art with the screens. So could you tell me a little bit more about the creative aspect of it too? I mean, this is a technical background you just told us about, but what do the screens do? What the screens do is they create a um, kinetic video surface that is interacting with the performers that uh, are performing on stage here. These are dancers, acrobats, singers. So the robots become performers uh, in these shows. And the goal is to have the robots integrate into the show and not a, have it be some breakaway thing. It's really an integration of the screens with a kinetic kind of motion to them um, integrated into the show. So that the, we had to teach the robots how to understand and how not to invade into that space, but to be in the environment properly, to look as though they came out of the space, not came into it. So I've seen the show a couple times now, last night two times, I'll do it again tonight two times. This is the inaugural sort of media cruise for, for the Quantum of the Seas. And what I found pretty spectacular was the coordinated motion between the performers, the robots, the monitors, and the video on the monitors, which just seems like magic to me. But like you said, it in the end, it just is, it looks like a natural performance. So there you have it. If you're looking for one of the most technologically advanced stages anywhere in the world, whether on land or on sea, the ABB robots here and the robo screens on the Quantum of the Seas by Royal Caribbean, it's where it's at. So just a uh, just a real quick, um, the Robo screens have been used in concerts as well, such as Bon Jovi. Um, he's used uh, screens like that. We have them in our customer center, um, in our in our Michigan facility. Um, it's amazing to see them work and see how how um, just seamless the pictures are between those screens and how they don't run into each other. But um, Little fun robot serving ice cream, um, real short, um, but this is something, this is a little uh, pod in Australia where a robot, our Yumi actually is serving ice cream. And you saw a little clip of it um, in the Yumi video early on. Fun little video. Okay, so for those of you that are car fanatics, um, those that want to do cool paint jobs and maybe are interested in the automotive industry, um, this is something that's new as well. It's called our Pixel Paint. Um, you'll be amazed at what it can do um, as far as paint jobs in these vehicles. Car buyer.
buyers today expect greater levels of customization for their vehicles than ever before. ABB's new pixel paint technology gives manufacturers a simple, fast and cost-effective solution to meet this demand. Pixel paint removes the need for manual masking of panels. It removes double cycle time for two-tone paint jobs. ABB's system reduces costs. ABB Pixel Paint's inkjet head features more than 1,000 nozzles. ABB's new Pixel Paint technology offers greater levels of customization for vehicles than ever before. And as a last video, um, almost not quite three minutes, but um, ABB's mobile laboratory concept. So Hospital of the Future, we opened our Texas Medical Center down in Houston, um, and there's some amazing technology going on down there in that medical area in the medical mile. Um, so take a look at this. This will be our last uh, video, and then I will close with a thank you um, and just just a few reminders for those of you that are students and, and trying to figure out what you want to do for your career. The largest medical hub in the world just got even more state of the art. The Texas Medical Center in Houston treats 10 million patients a year and is at the forefront of life science innovation. And now it's also home to ABB's first global healthcare research hub, bringing the power of robotics and automation to medicine. Together with ABB, we envisioned a whole new world that we could use robotics as the core for our innovation in our labs, in the way that our hospitals work, in the logistics, in the way that we refine the processes in healthcare. Healthcare is changing dramatically. We have shortages of people. We have shortages of talent. And ABB Robotics is bringing that technology and putting it right at the center of all the innovation at the medical center. Among the concepts being demonstrated here are collaborative Yumi robots which can work with centrifuges in test tube handling and even navigate autonomously around the labs and among their human co-workers. For the other researchers here, ABB's involvement is a valuable opportunity to capitalize on the booming possibilities of advanced technology in healthcare. My dad always taught me the only thing you can predict in life is change except from a vending machine. Right now, the amount of change in medical devices, in medical technology, and healthcare is greater than it's ever been. And it's all about automation, it's about robotics, it's about artificial intelligence. The latest advances in healthcare call for a lot of laborious test processes. ABB's analysis suggests that many of these tasks could be done up to 50% faster with automation. Enabling robots now in the clinical laboratory to perform these very highly repetitive high volume functions each day uh, is going to enable our medical technologists in the laboratory to focus on other tasks in the laboratory and together we can do so much more to serve our patients. I feel personally very excited to enter in a sector where we can use our expertise in many other industries to help a sector that is so important for all of us. We are aging. Um, many people are entering into, into the healthcare system. So there are many challenges and we with our expertise in robotics and automation can help alleviate that pain and make the healthcare system more productive. ABB says they expect the market to quadruple by 2025 to reach nearly 60,000 non-surgical medical robots, increasing the accuracy of vital laboratory work and ultimately raising patient safety. Um, I am not going to... Uh, share with you the Fanta Can challenge, but feel free to look um, up that video. Um, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's about speed and accuracy of robots in general. Um, so uh, 
you know, last few points. Yes, I work at ABB and yes, all of the videos were about ABB robots. However, um, whatever you seek for your career, my advice to you would be have a passion for what you're going to do, no matter what it is. Uh, many times um, it's easier to figure out what it is you don't like to do. Put that behind you. You can have hobbies and passions. You can be passionate about your hobbies, but you also want to be passionate about your career. That will continue that longevity and it will also prompt you to continue with that lifelong learning that we stressed in the very first video. Um, hopefully I introduced you some careers that you, hopefully I introduced you to some careers that you never thought existed um, and, and sparked some thought there as well. Um, good luck in your future and um, feel free to reach out to ABB with any questions. Um, job shadow, do job shadows wherever you can, internships, apprenticeships, assistantships, anything that you can do to figure out what it is that you want to do um, as your career. Um, and keep those passions very close and those hobbies very close at heart as well. Um, thank you again and good luck to all of you.